Hey everyone, so this next topic is about the dexamethasone suppression test. Um, and the reason why I wanted to actually go over this is because it can be confusing. And I've seen questions on step one, step two, and step three about it. So they test it all the time. Uh, and it, you know, it's a topic that again can be confusing, but really it's not that confusing. It's really simple, but I'll go over how to, how to basically go um, about it. Okay, and before I go on, let's just go over what happens normally. Uh, again, I went over this in a, a previous video about pituitary tumors. The pituitary releases ACTH from here, right? ACTH then goes to your adrenal gland, right? And what happens here? The adrenal gland then releases cortisol, right? Cortisol then goes and does all of its things. Weight gain, it causes hyperglycemia, you know, and it causes all of those different things, which you see in Cushing syndrome, the moon face, the buffalo hump, the purple striae, the, you know, the patients with insulin resistance, cortisol is the one doing all of those things, okay? Now, what does cortisol do then? Once cortisol, you know, has all these effects on the body, it goes back to the pituitary and it inhibits the release of ACTH. It's kind of a control mechanism to make sure you don't have too much cortisol and not too little at the same time. So it's a constant, you know, tug of war going on. The cortisol is going back and inhibiting it, saying, hey, there's too much of me. Stop releasing ACTH. Okay? So that's what happens normally. Now, once you know that, let's go over some, basically, pathology. Now, there are three ways you can get Cushing syndrome. Okay? Now remember guys, what's Cushing syndrome? It's with really high cortisol, okay? And they always describe it on the test, you know, with the, again, purple striae, buffalo hump, obese, um, you know, all these things. Um, and, that, and that's exactly how they'll describe it to you, okay, Cushing's. And they love testing it with high cortisol. Now, the first place you can get Cushing syndrome from is a tumor in the pituitary gland, okay? Now, if I have a tumor in the pituitary gland, okay, what is it releasing? ACTH, right? Lots of it. A lot of ACTH. Now, again, what is this ACTH doing? It's going to my adrenal gland, right? And it's releasing cortisol from here but a lot more of it, right? Because there's no really control here. This tumor, all it knows is, okay, my only job is to produce ACTH. It's an ACTH producing factory, and that's all this tumor is doing. And it's going to the adrenal gland, causing cortisol to build up more and more and more, okay? And it's causing the same, you know, syndrome that I talked about earlier. Now, what's the second way you can get Cushing syndrome? Um, is by a adrenal tumor. Okay. Now, in these patients, their pituitary is perfectly fine. It's normal. Okay. And what this adrenal tumor is releasing is a lot of cortisol, again, causing the same thing, Cushing syndrome. But what this cortisol is doing is it's going back to pituitary and inhibiting the release of ACTH, okay? All right? It's inhibiting ACTH. So what's the difference here? Now, in our first patient, we had high ACTH and high cortisol. Okay, in our second patient, what is our ACTH level here? It's really low, okay? That's the difference. Low ACTH, but really high cortisol, okay? 
and they love giving you these questions um, and, and they'll tell you, oh, the ACTH level is high uh, and the cortisol level is low or the, you know, vice versa. Um, and they'll expect you to know what it is. But it's really simple. All you have to know is this negative feedback and they expect you to know where the tumor is. Is it in the pituitary or is it in the adrenal just by this? So remember, high ACTH, high cortisol, pituitary tumor. Low ACTH, high cortisol, adrenal tumor. Okay, makes sense? Now, there's a third way we can get Cushing syndrome. Okay, and this is the tricky part, that, and they love testing this stuff. What this is, is uh, ectopic ACTH. So we have our pituitary gland here. Okay, um, and again, this patient's pituitary gland is perfectly normal. Okay. And its job is to release ACTH, but what's happening here? There is another tumor, another cancer, that's releasing high levels of ACTH. Really high levels of ACTH. Now, what is this ACTH doing? Same thing, going to the adrenal gland and releasing really high amounts of cortisol. And you'll get the same exact thing, Cushing syndrome, from this also. Now, these patients, well, where is the ACTH coming from? From the tumor, not the pituitary. Understand this, this is a big difference. The ACTH is coming from the tumor, not the pituitary. They still have high ACTH, and they still have high cortisol. Well, didn't we say the pituitary tumor does the same thing, high ACTH, high cortisol? What if we had a patient and had both of this? How would we differentiate the two? How do we know where the tumor is? And what is it a pituitary tumor or what type of tumor? That's where the dexamethasone suppression test comes in. Okay, and I'll explain exactly what that is. But before I begin, what type of tumors release ACTH? Those are small cell carcinoma of the lung, okay? Really, really big question here, and I'll, I'll show you more about how they ask it. Small cell cancer of the lung, okay? All right. All right, guys. So you know the three cases that can give us Cushing syndrome, right? Now, Let's think about what dexamethasone is. What is it? it? All it is is a steroid, okay? That's all it is. Okay, it's a steroid that is exactly like cortisol. When you see dexamethasone, just think it's the same thing as cortisol. Okay. It may have some different properties, may have different potency than cortisol, but it's doing the same exact thing. Now, how does um, this test work? Okay. What you do is you give a high dose and a low dose. Okay. Low and high dose. Okay. Now, what happens normally is if I gave you, a normal person, high dose dexamethasone, what that would do is this high amount of dexamethasone would go to the pituitary and inhibit the release of ACTH, okay? It would just be negative feedback. Your pituitary gland would think, hey, there's way too much cortisol or dexamethasone here. I need to stop producing ACTH. It'll stop. So there'll be really low ACTH, and that's what they measure. You'll see with the high dexamethasone suppression test, they'll tell you, oh, what was the ACTH level after the test? and before the test, okay? In a normal patient, again, if you give them high amounts of dexamethasone, what will their ACTH level be? Low. And if their ACTH level is low, then what will their cortisol level be? Low also, right? They don't really test the low and the high together. It's very rare will they, where they will give you both in a question, low and high, and have you differentiate between two. But I'll, I'll tell you guys anyways uh, what it's all about. Now, let's take the dexamethasone test in each scenario here. Okay, Let's take it first in the pituitary tumor. Let's say I have a patient with a pituitary tumor, 
and I gave them a uh, dexamethasone challenge with low ACTH. Let's say I gave this first patient with a pituitary tumor a low dose of dexamethasone. What would happen? Nothing, okay? Their body is so used to producing ACTH and cortisol that this cortisol that's going back, yeah, it's trying to cause some type of negative feedback, but this tumor doesn't really care. It, it's, not, it's not the same type of cell that this normal pituitary is. Normal pituitary gland cells have the negative feedback, let's say, receptors, okay? This tumor does not have that. So cortisol is not going to go back and, and, and do it. And this tumor doesn't care. It's going to keep on releasing ACTH. Now, what if I give high-dose dexamethasone? With high-dose dexamethasone, what will actually happen is that this will actually be inhibited, okay? Um, with high dose, it will be suppressed. All right, that's the difference. So what they'll give you is maybe a table, okay? And they'll say, okay, low dose uh, dexamethasone. Um, what happened? ACTH and cortisol. High and high. Now they gave a high dose dexamethasone. What happened? you know, ACTH uh, decreased and cortisol decreased, okay? With high dose dexamethasone, you will see some decrease in ACTH and cortisol in a pituitary tumor, okay? In a pituitary tumor, remember that. With high dose, you will see a decrease. Why? Because of negative feedback, okay? But with low dose, not so much. Nothing really will happen. It'll remain high. Now, let's go to the second example here. We have an adrenal tumor producing cortisol. Now, this adrenal tumor doesn't care about ACTH at all. It makes no difference to the adrenal tumor whether the pituitary is making ACTH or not. Okay? So, with this one, what happens with a low and a high? We have a low and a high dose of dexamethasone, okay? We have ACTH and cortisol. Well, normally, what did we have? Low ACTH and high cortisol. With low dose dexamethasone, we'll still have low ACTH, but we'll probably still have high cortisol, okay? What happens if I give a lot of dexamethasone now? Does this adrenal tumor care? No, it's still gonna keep on producing a lot of cortisol. And will that make any difference to ACTH? No, because it was low as it was from the first place. It was pretty low to begin with, so it's still going to be low. So this is the thing, with low dose and high dose, the ACTH will remain low and the cortisol will remain high. The dexamethasone test in this patient doesn't really do anything because it doesn't matter. The adrenal tumor doesn't care. Okay, makes sense? Now let's go to the third patient here, who has the ectopic ACTH from the tumor, the small cell lung cancer, releasing ACTH. Now remember, in this patient, what was going on? The tumor is releasing ACTH, going to the adrenal, releasing cortisol, okay? And the pituitary gland is basically being inhibited by negative feedback, and it's not really releasing anything. All the ACTH is coming from the tumor. Now, again, if I gave this patient low or high, and I measured my ACTH and cortisol levels, okay, normally in this patient, what is my ACTH level? Really high, okay? If I give dexamethasone, what is it gonna do? The dexamethasone will come to the pituitary gland and say, hey, there is a good amount of cortisol released, but the pituitary gland says, you know what, I'm not releasing any ACTH as it is, so what else can I possibly do? So the ACTH in the low dose will still be high, why? Because it's coming from the tumor, not the pituitary, okay? The ACTH from the pituitary is very low, but the tumor is still releasing it, okay? So we'll still have a high amount of ACTH and a high amount of cortisol. 
Now, what if I gave a high amount of dexamethasone, a lot of steroid? Same thing, guys. The pituitary is shut down. This factory is completely shut down, not producing any ACTH. So its negative feedback is, you know, at its maximum here. So what's going to happen? Nothing. The ACTH will remain high, and the cortisol will remain high. Okay? That's the difference here. Okay? They'll give you the dexamethasone test, and they'll ask you, where the tumor is, okay? Remember, the, the main way you can actually get confused is by comparing the, the ectopic ACTH to the pituitary tumor. Remember, the pituitary tumor was suppressed by high doses, but the ectopic ACTH was not. It, it just kept on producing um, high amounts of ACTH and high amounts of cortisol, whereas the patient with the adrenal tumor had low ACTH and high cortisol. Okay? Make sense? All right, good. Now, the next question that, like, this is a third order question that they, they actually have seen being tested is they'll give you the whole question. They'll say, a uh, 50 year old female comes in, you know, she's obese, she has a BMI of 30, uh, diabetes. They show you a picture, and this lady looks exactly like what Cushing's is. And you're thinking to yourself, "Oh, this is Cushing's." Now, they give you, they'll, they'll give you that. They'll, they'll take for granted that you know it's Cushing's. Now they'll say, "Oh, we gave a low dose and a high dose dexamethasone," and they'll give you the table, right in front of you, in your results, and they'll ask you, "What is your next step in management, or where would you look for a tumor?" and you know, you'd see, okay, this lady has Cushing. You gave low dose and high dose and no effect to ACTH and cortisol. That means it must be an ectopic tumor releasing ACTH. If it's ectopic, then what is the most likely tumor? Small cell lung cancer. Okay? So you would, sometimes in questions I've seen, the answer being a chest x-ray or a chest CT, okay? Those are the answers because they're looking for the small cell lung cancer, okay? That will be the answer. That's like a third order question right there, okay? All right, guys, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment and uh, ask on it.